Hi, welcome to Primetime Pickleball. My name is Jordan Briones, and today I'm at the Hypsel Court in Gilbert, Arizona. And in this video, we're going to show you how you can train with a partner and a ball machine. Let's jump right in. Missing one of our videos is like missing an easy put away. Don't let that be you. Subscribe now. If you're interested in purchasing the tutor, then go to ptpgear.com tutor. We will make a small commission at no extra cost to you, which helps us support our efforts to continue to put out high quality free instruction online. The link is also in the description below. Thanks for your support. All right, so in this video, we're going to go over four awesome drills that you can do with a ball machine and a partner. All these drills are designed to improve specific pickleball skills, and they each work on a different aspect of the game for each player. Now, let's jump into the first drill. In this first drill, we see that one player is up at the net, and the other player is back at the baseline. The ball machine will feed the ball to the player that is back, which will simulate a return of serve. That player will hit a third shot drop with the goal of forcing their opponent to make contact below net level. The net player can choose to hit the ball out of the air as a volley, or they can step back and drive the ball. The player at the baseline will then hit another drop, and then the net player will hit that second ball to the open court. This is a great way to get multiple repetitions on the same shot over and over. The player at the baseline is trying to hone in on hitting good drops, and the net player is doing their best to hit shots as deep as possible. Now you can set this drill up on the even or the odd side with the player at the baseline hitting drops either down the line or cross court. In this scenario, the return is coming cross court from the odd side and I'm practicing my drops down the line. The main thing that I'm focusing on here is trying to hit shots that make my opponent contact the ball below the net. This is a great exercise for training that particular shot and also for learning how to get better at recognizing when you've hit an effective third shot drop. The net player in this drill gets to work on their fourth shot as they try their best to keep the ball as deep as they can. After the machine runs out of balls, you can switch roles and then the other player can practice their third shot drops. Now, let's jump into the next drill. In this next drill, you will see that we are set up in the same formation as the previous one, with one player back at the baseline and the other player at the non-volley zone. The ball machine again will simulate the return of serve, and now instead of hitting a third shot drop, I will work on my third shot drives. My goal is to keep my drives as low to the net as possible, while also trying to hit it with as much pace and topspin as I can. The net player should do their best to hit solid volleys down into the court, trying to make as many balls as they can without popping the ball up high. After that volley from the net player, you will see me split step to prepare for the next ball, which would be the fifth shot. This is a really important skill on its own, as you always want to make sure that you are in a balanced ready position as the ball is coming back towards you. So after my drive, my goal is to get in a good ready position to hit my fifth shot, and for this shot, I do my best to drop it into the non-volley zone if I can. Then this gives the net player an opportunity to practice their drives as they hit their second shot into the open court. This is an awesome exercise because it works on both drives and volleys as it also works on that important fifth shot drop from the transition zone. Remember, you can experiment with different variations by having the ball machine feed balls cross court or down the line. You can also set up cross court from your partner and practice hitting cross court drives. When you implement the tips we're sharing in today's video, we're confident it will help your game. As helpful as these tips are, they're only part of the story when it comes to playing winning doubles pickleball. If you want to learn all the strategies you'll need to dominate the doubles court, then you'll want to check out our complete doubles system so you have a clear A to Z plan to follow. Because when you have a clear and proven plan, you can confidently and systematically win more points in games and have more fun on the court. Go to doublesystem.com today to learn all about it. All right, let's get back to today's video. These next two drills reflect two specific scenarios that you may often see play out in a real game. It is very important that any drill you do is based on actual real game scenarios so that you are actually training specific shots and skills that you will use in a real game. For this one, my partner will start at the non-volley zone line and I will start in the transition zone. The ball machine will feed a ball somewhere in between my yellow and green zone 
and I will work on attacking this ball right at the player in front of me at the non-volley zone. You can find this scenario play out when you are making your way through the transition zone. If you get a high ball in the transition zone, you definitely want to develop the skill of attacking with a swinging volley. Here, I set up the ball machine to feed me a ball in the transition zone so I can work on this shot. The net player's goal is to do their best to defend the shot and if possible, counterattack this ball down at my feet. After the net player volleys the ball, I will try my best to hit a reset shot into the non-volley zone and then the net player will then hit a drive to the open court. As the ball comes my way, I have to quickly get set up and decide if I'm going to hit a forehand or a backhand swinging volley. My goal is to hit my shot in a way that forces my opponent to have the lowest contact point possible. I will also try my best not to hit it directly towards my opponent's body. If you always attack at your opponent's body, you will make it a lot easier for them to counterattack your ball. If I can, I will try to target my shot low towards their forehand or backhand side. As you get into more advanced levels of play, you'll notice how important placement is over power. Let's watch these next two clips as I force a low contact point. As we just saw, low balls that make your opponents reach are really tough to handle. Practicing hitting specific targets away from your opponent's body will drastically improve your game. This is what I love about this drill. One player can work on their attacking skills and the other can work on their defense and counter attacking skills. Don't forget that you can always mix it up by placing the ball machine on the other side of the court or you can set up cross court from each other to work on hitting the attack cross court. Now, let's move on to the last drill. In this last drill, my partner will start up at the non-volley zone and I will start in the transition zone. For this drill, the ball machine will feed a high ball to the net player and I will do my best to defend and reset his attack. Whenever you are in the transition zone and your opponent gets a high ball that they can attack and hit down on, you always want to try and reset this ball into the non-volley zone. There will be many times in a real game scenario in which you will have to defend and reset the attack coming your way. This is definitely one of the hardest skills in pickleball, but with good practice, you can develop and learn this skill. This was actually a very tough drill. The best thing that I can do is get ready for a low ball hit towards my feet and try my best to track the ball as early as I can. Just like the last drill, when you attack, you always want to try to attack the ball low and keep it away from your opponent's body. Let's quickly stop right here. Before we move on, I do need to mention something super important. Please be aware of any balls that may be rolling around on your side of the court. Stepping or slipping on a ball can cause serious injury. So for best practice, make sure that you stop what you are doing, pick up any balls on your side of the court, move the ball into a safe place, and then continue. Okay, now that we've got all that cleared up, let's jump right back into the video. If you can, you want to make them stretch and reach for the ball or hit it towards their dominant side to jam them up. Here are a couple of great attacking shots that were placed in a perfect location, causing a forced error. There are so many things that you can do with a ball machine. These four drills are just the tip of the iceberg as you can set up all different kinds of real game scenarios and the beauty of it is that you can practice it over and over again. The real value of a machine is that it can feed you the same exact shot over and over. Getting repetitions of a particular shot is vital, especially if you are trying to improve that particular shot or skill. 
All right, so I really hope you like this video. These are just some really good ways that you can train using a ball machine and also having your partner there too. So hopefully you really got a lot of things out of this and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Thanks so much for watching. For more free video lessons, please visit primetimepickleball.com. But before you head on over there, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, for primetime pickleball shirts like this and other great apparel, please visit ptpgear.com.